Hey everybody, I'm Zach from Bluebot Tech, and today we're going to be going over how to install and set up Home Assistant. So this all started for me about a couple months ago. I was originally a Wink user. I started getting email messages from Wink saying they're going to switch to a subscription model, which I wasn't super happy about because I already wasn't super happy with their service. Um, it was always very laggy. Things wouldn't work. API would be down for an entire day. Um, so I eventually got Jason on board. We started testing out Home Assistant and I don't think we've looked back. So we're going to try and show you some of the benefits over the course of the next couple videos. But today we're going to focus on getting started. So once we're set up and installed with Home, Home Assistant, we're going to go over how to install the file editor, which will allow us to edit configuration.yaml or other files on the Home Assistant. This is generally how you set up most things or integrations. After that, we're going to set up Samba Share, which will allow us in the event we can't get through to the web interface, we'll be able to connect on a, a PC or Mac or Linux via some sort of share. After that, we're going to go over DuckDNS and Let's Encrypt. Now this will give us that remote access. So I know one thing that was important for me is being able to access and control my devices from anywhere, not just on my local network. So that duck DNS will give us our dynamic DNS and let's encrypt. will make sure we're connecting securely and not sending, you know, username and passwords over clear text. And then to go along with that, we're going to show you how to prepare your router for using duck DNS and set up port forwarding. So let's get started. Okay, everybody. So welcome back to the Bluebot Tech Channel. Today we're going to be going over how to install and set up a basic or first installation of Home Assistant. We're going to cover how to install that on a Raspberry Pi. So to start off, we're going to go to homeassistant.io, as I already have pulled up here. We'll go to getting started. And then we'll click here on device that is supported by this guide. Today I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 3 model B plus um, so it is 64 bit but we're going to use the 32 bit image um, as you can see it's required for the GPIO support so just in case we want to go that way in the future we can so again we'll click here this will download that image I've already got the image here on my desktop as you can see but we'll walk through the steps as you know you're gonna have to anyway Next, we're going to want to plug in our adapter, or if your computer has a card reader, um, whatever you're using to read your micro SD card. So as you see, this already has Home Assistant install installed on it, so we are going to need to format this disk. So I'll show you how we're going to do that. And close these for now. So I'll be using SD card formatter. It's definitely one of the easier methods on um, on Windows. Now, if you're using something like Mac, I personally like to use uh, Apple Pie Baker. And of course, we'll include links to all these things in the description below the video. Of course, you do have your command line tools such as Disk Utility um, and then uh, DF in Linux. You can, you can do all this there as well. So to make this easy, we will select our card that we're formatting. We'll give it a quick format. Yes. So as you can see, we're now formatting that drive. Okay, we've got that drive nice and empty now. Okay, so from the, at this point, we're done formatting the card and we don't need SD card formatted anymore, so we can go ahead and close that. From here, we need to write that image onto disk. So here we have the image file. To get this into a usable format, as you can see, it's uh, gzipped, so we, which is just a, a compression method. So I'll use 7-zip to unzip that and we'll include the download for 7-zip as well just in case you don't have it. So 7-zip will extract files here which puts it right here on my desktop. I've already done this so we don't need to go there but as you can see it's no longer got that gzip extension. So we're going to go to Balena Etcher now. This is a super simple software for um, writing 
these images to your SD card. So this is a great tool for more than just Home Assistant. So we'll flash from file. We'll want to choose that HasOS RPi3 image open. We'll double check just to make sure it grabbed the right disk. Of course it did. That's the, the disk I'm using, the 64 gigabyte micro SD card. Continue. And now we will flash it. And now this will take uh, several minutes, so we'll be back in a couple minutes when this is done. All right, and we are back. As you can see, we finished flashing. That, uh, that disk image is now being validated by Etcher, but we can get started on a few of the next steps. So depending on how you're going to uh, attach your Raspberry Pi to your network, whether it be wired or wireless, wired, definitely, uh, you know, the easier way to go, plug a cable in, you should be good to go. Otherwise, uh, we're going to need to set up our Raspberry Pi so it knows what network to join right off the bat. So to do that, we can screw down here to option three. As you see, we can set up Wi-Fi or a static IP address. So of course, if you wanted to set a static IP for um, a wired connection, this is uh, a, you would do a similar process here. So we'll walk through the steps of setting up your Raspberry Pi to connect to whatever wireless network you decide. So they do have a um, Home Assistant how-to here. If we open that up real quick and show you. So it opens their GitHub page. You can scroll down and you're most likely going to want the wireless LAN WPA PSK. So you're simply going to take that and copy this into a text document. So you can right click on the background here, new text document. Um, I've already got one here. So we've set this up already. As you can see, all we've done is change the SSID and the password. So password goes here for your Wi-Fi and your SSID goes here. Sorry, they are blanked out, but you know, put your info there. You'll save that file, close out of that. And then from here, you're going to want to remove that .txt um, extension on that file. Now, if you don't see that .txt extension, what you can do is go to the control panel. You'll go to Appearance and Personalization, File Explorer Options, and then once that pops up, you'll go to View. You'll scroll down here a little bit to Hide Extensions for Known File Types. If you can't see it, that will most likely be checked. You want that unchecked, and then you'll Apply, OK, and then that should let you see that .txt file extension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just get rid of that. Now Windows will probably give you a little warning that changing the extension might make it unusable. Yes, you do want to do that. Okay, and then once we have that all set up, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna go back to our micro SD card. As you can see here. So this is these are all the files that Etcher wrote onto our SD card. So following the instructions in home assistant as you can see you're going to want to add this config folder at the top of the directory so new folder config all in caps you want to go in there you're going to make again a new folder this one's going to be called network all lowercase and then within that network folder that's where you're going to drop your my network file. Okay, so we can go back to the root of our drive, make sure everything is all good, and we should be able now to eject this SD card. So we'll go ahead and eject our USB storage, pull that out, and now it's time to put our micro SD card into our Raspberry Pi. Okay. Once that micro SD card is in our Raspberry Pi, power it on and let that start booting up. And I will show you the splash page once that's loaded. Okay. Now that we've got our uh, prepped SD card in our Raspberry Pi, we should be able to go to this URL. So we're going to go to homeassistant.local on port 8123. Now it does start up fairly quick, so we'll give it a minute. We should see it start to come up. Okay, as you can see now, 
we get the splash screen of preparing home assistant. This can take some time. So, you know, now would be a good time to you know, go grab a beer, grab a coffee. So we'll wait for this and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. So as you can see, our home assistant server is finished setting up. We need to give it a little bit of information. So we're gonna give it a name. We're gonna just call this Bluebot Tech. Keep the same username. We'll give password. And we'll create our account. Now once this account is created, we can create several different user accounts uh, once we have Home Assistant set up. So you can set your home location in Home Assistant. This beneficial because what you can do is it'll choose a weather location or you know your sun up, sundown location, and you can do some automations based on your actual location. So we don't need to do this right now since this is just a, a quick setup, but if, if this is your personal Home Assistant server, obviously this may be a good idea if you want those features. So we'll just click Next. Now as you can see, Home Assistant has already started to find some things on the network. Uh, as you can see, it's found a Canon MG6600 series printer. And if we click more, it may show more. I like to kind of set this stuff up after I'm done installing the add-ons I want in Home Assistant. So we'll just click finish for now. Okay, so the first place it takes us is the Lovelace dashboard. As you can see, we have our navigation bar over here on the left side. So far, it leaves us with a weather, most likely based on that location that I gave. It's in Celsius, um, but being in America, I would probably default to Fahrenheit. Um, and then up here, we have a couple little widgets showing, you know, updater is on and the Raspberry Pi power status and our location for the Bluebot Tech user is unknown. It's also gonna ask if you wanna stay logged in. What this is gonna do is kinda set a token for you so that you're not constantly having to log in. If, uh, if you end up using one of the mobile apps and you wanna kinda log out an old session, you can go into your user down here and you'll find those sessions down here at the bottom. So our refresh tokens, it'll set one of those. Um, we can also create some long-lived access tokens for other things, as you can see, they can be valid for 10 years. So you're gonna to wanna to use those for things you really need to have that long access. So we'll stay logged in. Our notifications, as you can see, it's discovering devices on the network, but we're, like I said, we're gonna come back to that. So what we're gonna get started with uh, setting up our server is we'll head to our supervisor. We'll go to our add-on store. And one of the first things we're going to want to add is our file editor. So we'll go ahead and add that. Install. So there's not a whole lot of setting up with the file editor. As you can see, we'll let this install. You can read over the documentation, but it's fairly easy to use. Should just be about be installed. Okay, and as you can see, it is now installed. We're going to keep it to start on boot. And if you want, I like to do this just because the file editor is pretty common to use. We'll go ahead and set that to show in sidebar and we'll go ahead and start this add-on. All right, our add-on is now started. One thing or the main thing that we're gonna be editing with the file editor, we'll go in here just to show you real quick, is the configuration.yaml. So as you can see, there's not much here now, but as we grow our home assistant installation, so will our configuration.yaml will have things like Zigbee, Z-Wave, HTTP, Alexa, etc. So, you know, this grows a lot and very quickly. So you're going to kind of get comfortable with dealing with your uh, configuration.yaml. All right, we'll go back to our supervisor, add-on store. A few other things we're definitely going to want to add is our Samba share. So we'll go ahead and install that. And the nice thing about Samba is should your home assistant server just for some reason the web browser portion stop working we can access it via some sort of uh, network share so whether it's windows or mac you can always connect to it and then you can move files in and out and say you completely screwed up your configuration.yaml what you can do is mount that share go in edit the configuration.yaml and then reapply it and hopefully you can recover your server. However, 
We'll get into backups later and how you recover from, you know, potentially a catastrophic failure. So there is some configuration necessary for this. So our username, we'll leave it at Home Assistant for now. We'll set our password to Bluebot Tech just in case we need to access it. Everything else you can leave fairly standard and we can save info and we can go ahead and start that and of course start on boot as well. So we can go back. Now you see we have two things running. Well, this is not running yet. As you can see, it's grayed out. We'll get to that. So it'll probably require some sort of reboot. The next thing we're going to add, we'll get the duck DNS started. So we'll click install there. Now this is going to be a fairly longer setup. Um, not hard, but we're going to have to go to duck DNS, set our subdomain and, you know, kind of set up some let's encrypt stuff. The great thing about DuckDNS is it makes it super easy to access your home assistant from outside your network and with Let's Encrypt, it lets you do so securely. So we can look over the documentation real quick, but you know the main goal of you watching this video is to watch us set it up. So we'll go ahead and set our Let's Encrypt terms to true. Now we'll leave our full chain.pem and privkey.pem. These are defaults and they work the way they are. So we do need our DuckDNS token, so we're going to go to DuckDNS.org. Um, I'm going to sign in with GitHub. And then as you can see, I've already set this up, but essentially what you're looking for here is this DuckDNS token. And then you'll also need to set up some sort of subdomain. So what you'll do essentially is click here, type in whatever subdomain you want. You'll click Add Domain. If it's successful and not an already registered subdomain, then you'll get a success message and it'll grab your current IP. So what we want to do from here is grab our token. So we'll copy that. We'll come here to our token, paste it. Looks like we have a leading space. Okay, there we go. And then we'll want to change our domain. So we were bluebottech.duckdns.org. Okay. Now we'll save that. And we're gonna wanna check start here. And then, okay, now that it's started, we're gonna come here to our log. So everything's starting up. We're gonna wanna refresh this occasionally. As you can see, it's now generating our account key. And every time we refresh, as it's setting things up with Let's Encrypt, we should be getting a little further along. What we're looking for is everything to build and check out successfully and in the end it's going to say done. So as you can see we're making some progress, creating new directories. Again we're looking for that done. And after this is set up we may need to do a restart of the server. Um, that'll help kind of everything along especially with DuckDNS. Oh, looks like our Samba share is now good to go. So while we're waiting on DuckDNS let's add on a few more items. Um, Mosquito Broker, this will be great for, you know, all your kind of MQTT type applications. So we'll install this, we'll get to this in other videos, um, especially with MQTT and Node-RED and how to set up automations um, and controlling things really over Wi-Fi. So as you can see, this is, you know, a little bit more configuration. I'm not going to configure this right now just for saving time, but we'll have further videos on configuring Mosquito Broker and Node-RED and all the fancy things you can do with that. Let's go back now and check on our DuckDNS. So it does look like everything is started. Let's check. Yep, it says done now. So we can go here and test real quick HTTPS. Bluebottech.duckdns.org. Okay, not working. So what we know we need to do is do some port forwarding. Now to port forward, you're going to have to log into your router. Um, you know, everyone's router may not look the same. Unfortunately, you know, there's, there's a crazy amount of variables that we, we can't possibly cover. Um, I am using a, more advanced network setup with the uh, Ubiquiti Unify stuff, but you know, you may be using Cisco or Linksys or Netgear, whatever. Um, 
you're generally looking for the same thing. You're gonna to wanna to get into your settings and you're gonna try and find something involving port forwarding. Now we've already set this up, but as you can see, home assistant, so we'll go in here and edit just to show you and talk about what we're going over. So I've named this rule home assistant. I've enabled the rule. Interface is on my WAN interface, so that's coming from the internet. So what this is saying is anything coming from the internet, specifically on any IP, port 443, so that's kind of signifying that we're gonna be using that Let's Encrypt uh, SSL TLS encrypted tunnel. We're gonna, anything that hits the WAN interface from 443, we're gonna go ahead and, and forward that to 192.168.107.15 which is where my home assistant server is located on my network. And we're gonna forward that to, instead of port 443, we're gonna forward it from 443 to 8123. Um, and we're gonna allow both TCP and UDP because I haven't really looked into is home assistant using TCP or UDP for everything. So it's safer to go with both um, for now. Okay, so that is all set up. Now what we're looking for is the ability to log in. So from here, we're gonna want to go to our file editor. And we'll go into our configuration.yaml. We'll give it some space here. We'll throw in a comment. This is our HTTP section. What we're looking for here is HTTP. And then our base URL is bluebottech.duckdns.org. Our SSL certificate is sitting at our SSL directory fullchain.pem. And then our SSL key is at SSL privkey.pem. So as you can remember, those kind of were default values that we had in that duck DNS configuration. So we're gonna save this. Everything seemed to save successfully. So we are gonna to want to do a quick reboot. And once the reboot is over, we'll be right back. So just to do that, supervisor, we can go to our system and we can give this a quick reboot and we'll be right back. All right, welcome back everybody. So the server looks like it's just about back. So what we'll do is go to HTTPS, bluebottech.duckdns.org. All right, and now, as you can see, it's giving us the opportunity to log in from an HTTPS encrypted site. Everything looks good. We get a connection is secure. We can go ahead and log in. All right, and there we go. As you can see, we're in our home assistant server connected under HTTPS, so we are secure. If we go to the supervisor, as you can see, DuckDNS, File Editor, Mosquito, and Samba are all looking good. And we are logging in from technically somewhere kind of new since we are coming from HTTPS now instead of HTTP. So we can go ahead and say yes to that. And all right. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Uh, we're gonna have some great stuff coming up in the future with regards to Home Assistant, so look forward to that. We're gonna have things like how to set up Zigbee and how to set up Z-Wave, Node-RED, all the above. Thanks for watching. <laughs>